The chance of a pack tier, as you've seen in the thumbnail of this video, is just one of many reasons why I don't personally bench press anymore. So in this video I'm gonna give you all the reasons here why I don't personally bench press anymore. So you're gonna kinda slowly ease into all the reasons and I'm gonna hand them all to you on a silver platter. It's gonna take me a few minutes, but still under five minutes. So let's just dive right in. So essentially the, the topic of this video came after reading this book, which I just finished a few days ago, which is called The Physi Physics of Resistance Exercise. And I think that was a really, really good book because there's an ongoing struggle that I do face, or I think most people are facing in the fitness industry, is that we don't really know what is true and what is false. Contrary to, let's say, another thing that you can learn, such as physics, there are clear rules that work all the time. In the fitness industry, not so. You know, we either have, for example, on the exercise step standpoint, it's very hard to determine what will give you the best results for the least amount of time, effort, and injury risk. And we have three methods to determine that. And here's kind of the two methods that most people use. It's either bro science, and that is often listening to a complete outlier. So someone that is extremely gifted with genetics or someone that takes steroids. And both of these guys, you know, the rules that they follow do not really apply to you and me, right? So the second thing that most people like to, to listen to is science, but science without a reason. So I think it's clearly obvious to us most that science has almost become a religion. So science has replaced religion, but to do that, better, it has become one. So we see this in the current time where it's all oh, the COVID, the pandemic, oh, these guys are not the, not the side of the science, or, you know, I'm on the side of the science. You're not on the side of the science, you're just on the side of the newspapers, right? So most people don't really know what they mean by science. And just because you know the word and you know the kind of the basic understanding of science, is, science what science is, doesn't mean that you're a scientist. So if you actually look at the science in the fitness industry, you have to understand a few, few things. We have to understand that generally fitness and especially exercise is not a very lucrative industry to research contrary to the pharmaceutical industry or the supplements. Also, scientists are incentivized, I think this is a huge issue that no one really talks about, by getting as many citations as possible. And I think this is a clear indication, like if you're looking to get as many citations as possible, meaning other researchers who tell you that you're awesome, it's very hard to kind of incentivize thinking differently. And that's why you do incentivize by that strategy, you incentivize groupthink a lot. And also, if you look at actual kind of science, looking at things such as the bench press, so we usually see a group of 15 people that bench press for four weeks and seeing these results. Like first of all, 15 people is not enough. Um, they have kind of like statistical significance. And then you should ask yourself, yes, but could there have been a better method to get similar, if not better results? And we don't really know because there's no reason behind why people have done it that way. So the better way to go forward and I call this the hard way because in that way we actually have to think. You know, the, the previous two ways we don't have to think at all. But in this way, using physics and first principles, we actually have to use our own brain cells. And that is hard because as kind of Thomas Edison said, or here's the quote that he had on, on his laboratory all the time, there's no expedient to which a man will not go to to avoid the hard labor of thinking. So then we have to ask ourselves, what is truly an efficient exercise? If it's a dynamic exercise, meaning we're moving over, the, we're moving the muscle, are we moving over the full range of motion? So in the, in the bench press, we train the chest. No, we're not moving over the full range of motion because we're stopping right here. No, we don't, can, we can't move fully in. Then if the triceps, no, we're not moving over the full range of motion again because we're not fully extending the joint because you want to avoid injury. Here's, yes, it does provide actual load on the muscle, so that's a point for the bench press, but it doesn't minimize injury risk. And sometimes, or all the time, if an exercise requires a lot of weight to be effective, it's usually ineffective. Because pec tears are common, especially on the earlier stages, because you do have that much weight on your, on your chest. It's and the angle that the chest needs to pull on the muscle. I can put a quick animation here, uh, I think, to really outline this. It makes the exercise, it puts a lot of force and that then can result in pec tear. So generally, we do have a lot of load on the muscle, on the joints around, but not that much on the actual muscle. So what's the solution? 
There's two options that we have. And just end it, I'm gonna explain you this one right here. So we have two options. Number one, we have the decline dumbbell press that we can do because the dumbbell press overall is more effective than the bench press because we do have the full range of motion for the chest, right? The second thing that we can do is cable flies. So these are kind of the cable flies, but not the general one. We need to strongly lean forward because the most amount of the muscles of the chest are below the humerus or below the upper arm here. So the most fibers are below, meaning that usually when we lean forward or when we do a decline uh, bench press, it is more effective to stimulating most muscle fibers than let's say a regular or even an incline. So the reason I'm not bench pressing anymore is that it's not a 10 out of 10 exercise. It's maybe a seven out of 10. There are better exercises out there that probably will give us better results. So if you like this video, don't forget to smash the like button. If you want to see more videos like this, then don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And if you want to get coached by me, I help vegans get in the best shape of their life quickly and sustainably. If you click the link below, you can book a free call with yours truly. So see you in the next video or talk soon.